Welcome to another Across the Nation news segment here on AmericanFreePress.net. I'm American Free Press writer Mark Anderson. I'm with Denise Nichols and Alicia Mason, who was in the Army uh, for a couple of years at least, I believe. Uh, uh, Alicia, you were telling me today, November 17, on, the, on a pretty historic release of the Research Advisory Committee's uh, Gulf War Illnesses major report, you were telling me that um, uh, you have uh, multi-symptoms from the current conflict, the yes, current sir. operations, and what we've heard today is that um, to a large extent they think that the multi-symptom um, uh, uh, results of being exposed to the toxic soup of the first Gulf War, that that's all kind of a past thing, and that the uh, soldiers coming home from the current conflicts, Operation uh, Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, are suffering trauma, brain injury, some PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but they're not really getting these multi-symptom uh, illnesses like Gulf War I uh, veterans uh, experience and are still experiencing and even dying from and suffering from. Uh, but you, you, you yourself are an exception to that, right? You served in the current conflicts. You've been out a couple years out of the Army, but you have multi-symptoms, correct? Yes, I do, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, describe, if you would, uh, uh, Ms. Mason, what some of those symptoms are. Gastrointestinal problems, hair loss, uh, skin rashes, uh, multiple chemical sensitivity. I can't pump fuel into my own vehicle. I can't clean my house without getting sick. I get irritable, I get night sweats, um, unable, restless, unable to sleep, um, numbness in the arms and feet, photosensitivity, migraines, uh, severe low back pain, severe neck pain, stomach pains. It feels like um, when I breathe, a lot of times it feels like um, metal, like glass cutting inside my lungs. I get a lot of um, sharp stabbing pains. When I'm walking, sometimes I'll get a sharp stabbing pain that just sends me flying backwards. I get multiple problems. I mean, it just it goes on. So you have what the, the multi-symptoms uh, that are mostly attributed today to the Gulf War One. Only you're serving. You having having served in the current. Uh, war or occupation, you're having what what the what they're saying are mostly uh, uh, you know relegated to the past with Gulf War One. So it's not like uh, people that served in the current wars don't have these multi symptoms. They they do, and uh, I, I have to say that that I agree some of today's report with some skepticism. Now Denise Nichols, you were an Air Force nurse nurse in the first conflict in the early 90s overseas, uh, is serving in Iraq. Is that right? Yes. Now, Saudi. Saudi. Uh, what? What is your response to some of this uh, that we've heard today, both with earlier today uh, with the Research Advisory Committee's uh, major report and this subsequent meeting of uh, modern Gulf War veterans here at the National Press Club? Um, My response is that the committee did excellent work. Uh, it's not that we didn't know PB was a problem. The problem has been on the table since the PB the pills study, against uh, uh, the protostigmine bromide and yes. the chemicals and Dr. Uh, Moss's work way back when. Pesticides too. We we heard right. today. Besides uh, the PB so pills this against chemical attack. Kind of going back and centering on the chemicals, the prostigmine bromide. My concern is that we're not using all the breaking science that's available. Um, a couple of years ago, we had the Discovery Channel looking at uh, the blood of Gulf War veterans and doing DNA and uh, chromosomal aberrations. I think we need some more of that work to be done, although we are getting the message across that treatment is imperative. Get away from the stress, get away from the psychological and the somatic, okay, and get to real life. This is a real illness. We need the cutting edge research from cutting edge universities that can do the DNA work, the DNA aberrations, chromosomal work. Which has to do with genetic alterations which can come from radiological weapons such as de uh, depleted right. uranium. Our, our chemical effect. You know, we're not sure where those came from and we were able to get six of them done that the Discovery Channel worked on. I mean, we need to fund that kind of research because if we've got chromosome damage, uh, showing up in the DNA, which can RNA, come from both radioactive sources and chemical sources, right. then we need to know about that. The scientists need to know about that so that they can look at this and try to find this treatment. Now, uh, what I heard today is that uh, uh, just like uh, multi-symptom stuff is kind of a thing of the past. 
that it's mostly the PB pills, the pesticides. Uh, we heard today from uh, uh, Leah Steele, uh, who's here uh, of the Research Advisory Committee and others, that depleted uranium is a factor, yes, but not a very big one. They but, haven't closed the door. But they haven't closed the door, as we heard today. Uh, Alicia, what, what is your opinion on depleted uranium? Well, first of all, I'm thrilled to death that they are recognizing Gulf War Syndrome as an actual illness because ever since I came back from Iraq, I've been persecuted and told everything is in my head and it's all um, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'm angered because I'm in so much pain and nothing's being resolved. Now, um, the depleted uranium, whether they own up to that or not, I don't care. I'm really thankful they're owning up to the Gulf War Syndrome. In general. In general. And you, you were telling me earlier today um, at the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs main building where the report was released today, November 17th, that uh, you learned after the fact, after you were uh, put into the reserves and you yes, left sir. active duty, then you learned, oh, there's this thing called the depleted uranium that's uh, 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 infused into some munition casings, uh, such as the... Uh, it's radioactive poison that never leaves the earth. Yeah, the, the A-10 Warthogs, I believe, they're, they're 4,000 rounds a minute, I believe, are DU-tipped or DU-encased. Yes, sir. And uh, other munitions of small, medium sizes. There, there's parts in Iraq called no man's land, where nothing will grow, nothing will live. Um, a lot of cities we drove through, we would see um, people that were, you know, like little people, but their heads were extremely huge and they had all these weird lumps and bumps on them. They looked like aliens. And they would walk sideways. And I've seen a lot of um, deformed people in, in a lot of the cities we went to. And I always wondered, you know, why do they look like that? Yes, well, uh, I think to sum up, uh, what we've heard today is that uh, DU is still on the table because there's more research to be done. Uh, we've heard that the PB pills against chemical attack and pesticides so far are found by the committee and the related research to have been the main culprits in Gulf War illness from the first earlier Gulf War conflicts. But we have a long ways to go, and if I may have the final word here, I think a lot of it stems from ultimately the policymakers sending troops into harm's way for prolonged missions where there's no definable mission, much less a definable victory. And uh, we have unconstitutional, undeclared wars anymore. The last declared war was World War II. These police actions have inherent risks, and the risks are magnified when we have this toxic soup in a unique, hostile, uh, unforgiving desert environment. And these things are inevitable uh, that they're going to happen to one degree or another. And we can also hope that the troops that are still dying off the battlefield, which is many more thousands than we're, than we're being told in the official KIA killed in action figures, we can hope that they'll be vindicated by all this and that our policies can change, that we avoid the military draft and we no longer send our troops into undeclared, unwinnable, prolonged conflicts and instead defend our nation and its constitutional order. But thanks for watching here on American Free Press. I'm Mark Anderson with Across the Nation.